That's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> and you want to need some wood? <laughs> Hello, welcome to my jungle. Uh, wish me luck with filming today. I have a sick two year old home with conjunctivitis and a new kitten. So <sighs> there's a lot going on in my house right now. It's totally fine. I can still film. It'll be fine. Noisy. That is a bit noisy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So today I'm unboxing a plant delivery from, oh, that's not the right way. Oh, from Uprooted. And the first thing that I think Leo is more excited about than me is this box. What? That's so much fun. It's on the back too. As soon as I put it in the car, I was told that it's going to be painted. Which sounds like a good fun time. Let's just open it up, I guess. You're opening it? Yep, I'm gonna open it up. So I ordered this on Thursday evening, I think, and they shipped it out on Monday morning, which I had my tracking information on Sunday night. And it's arrived here, express post, on Wednesday. You which did it. I did it! Which is great, it always takes a, an extra day to get to the town that I live in. Okay, so the first thing when I open up the box is my invoice, which I will pop over there and have a look at. That's so cute. So there's this little thank you card with the cutest poem. I did it. Thanks, Sally. It is the cutest little rhyming poem about getting your new plant and falling in love with your new plant and how to take care of the plants, where to get more information. That's so cute. That is so well thought out. That's a plant. That's a plant. <gasps> oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> oh, that took me by surprise. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just gonna close that little flap again because I'm getting too excited looking at it. <laughs> So from what I understand, uprooted ship, uh, uh, bleh, 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 uprooted ships their plants in pots in soil, and I think it's a great idea. It's probably a little harder to ship and fit as many plants as you can into a box. This box, I'm pretty surprised by how small this box is. So inside the box here, there's these little cardboard flaps, and underneath each of these is, is some plants. I don't know that I'm gonna start with possibly the best plants, but they're the first ones I've seen, so let's just, let's just, let's just do it. This is gonna take a lot more cutting. One of the most foolproof ways I've seen of shipping plants is by taping pretty much everything that you can to the inside of the box, and it works perfectly just about every time. There's no damage or the plant hasn't been falling around or bumping around the box the whole ship. Hello, little sticky boy. <laughs> the other thing that happens every single time the pots and the plants are shipped to the inside of the box though is that it takes me a good half an hour to get the box back out. Totally worth it so that my plants come in perfect shape, but um, I still get just as frustrated every time. I just realized that I can pull this whole sort of thing up and out that has a few this is intricate packaging holy moly ah, I can see the other one so these little babies that I have here oh wow are both Jewel orchids. So jewel orchids are this little collection of different terrestrial orchids that all have really striking foliage. So this is a Ludicia Spider-Man, which is a cross between the Ludicia discolor, which is I think the most common of the jewel orchids that I see around quite a lot, and I think is the easiest to care for as well. 
Blue Desius Discolor crossed with, oh goodness, Anectocylus. Anectocylus. Oh, that was not what I was expecting. Anectocylus. Okay, so the uh, the uh, Ludicia Spider-Man here is crossed between the Ludicia Discolor and the Anectocylus Roxburghii. It has like red, orange, peachy. It looks like a different color in each leaf. The contrast is everything. That is so cool. They are a little bit long, a little stretched out. So once they're well adjusted to my house, well, specifically to my IKEA glass cabinet, I think I might chop and prop them, propagate those top leaves into a new plant and let the bottom become a new plant. So the other jewel orchid I have is just mind blowing, breathtaking. The Macodes Sanduriana. It looks really similar to the Macodes Vitola. And I was trying to find comparison photos between the two. And at first I was thinking that this Macodes Sanduriana had more sort of brown moment. But then I would see photos of immature Vitolas, Vitolas, and they had more of this brown as well. So anyway, this is one that I have. I'm very surprised to find out that the leaves are suede to touch. I thought that it would be glossy and it's not. It just has this whole extra fun element I wasn't expecting. It obviously has these lightning bolt details going on with that very neon lime green contrasted with that dark color. Oh my goodness. Like, is that not, not the coolest plant you've ever seen in your life? It's also looking pretty long and leggy, so I assume that I'll chop and prop this one as well, but that's fine. More plants, how fun. I think this is just like a weight. I can't not open it because, you know, what if there was just something in there? It would obviously be squashed to death, but <gasps> it is a plug. <laughs> it's not just a weight. I just dropped an actual plant on the floor. Okay, that's fine. I thought because the way this was stuffed in here and where it was placed, I thought that it was just um, like a space filler so the pots didn't move around, but no, it's my plant. <laughs> That's a tall house. That is a tall house. I wish my house was those colours. The little plant that was hiding in there was my little litho. So it looks like a little bum and mine looks like it's doing a poo. <laughs> I just had another interruption, so I have no idea what I've said about what. I hope I've said all the things I want to say about lithops because I'm moving on. I want to open the rest of my plant. Hey guys, it's just me from editing. I've just realized that I forgot to mention the one thing that I really wanted to mention about lithops, which is a YouTube video that I watched that was absolutely fascinating about the life cycle of lithops and you only need to water them maybe every six months. So I'm gonna link that video down below and I think you should watch. So, see it has this little force field of protection and a nice tissue paper to keep the actual foliage looking nice. This is so cute and full. Wow, these internodes are insane. Wow, it's the weirdest looking vine I've ever seen. This one vine is the most hectic one vine I think I've ever seen in any plant just at all. There are so many. Oh, <laughs> mm, to tell you what it is Philodendron heteraceum, so heartleaf philodendron, and this is the lemon lime variety. It's just so lush and beautiful and supple and perfect. There is no damage at all to any of these plants. Obviously, when you ship online, I do it expecting there to be a little bit of cosmetic damage. That is so cute. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's the kitten. So I'm torn about whether or not I want to chop this up and root them all and then have a full overflowing pot. I think I will do that, but it is really tempting to just sort of leave it the way it is. I love, I love this. Love it. I don't remember what else is in here, to be honest. What have we got? What have we got? Nothing has moved an inch in this packaging. All right, this looks like it's gonna be a bit of a bastard to get into, but <gasps> I just remembered what it was. <laughs> so sad. Uh, emotions are fine. <laughs> um, 
What have we got? We've got a plant here that I don't I don't think I've ever seen for sale uh, anywhere else. Surely it is for sale around. I don't think that it's, you know, shockingly uncommon or anything. Definitely more so in Australia than the US because I seem to see it. I seem to see it as a pretty readily available plant in the US. All right, let's take its lid off. This is the Serapegia linearum. Might sound familiar as Stringopars of Serapegia linearis subspecies Woodyi. The common name for this plant is String of Needles for pretty obvious reasons. It looks like a string of needles. So they're super tangled up, which is just very on brand for Serapegia. So it's long as heck. That is a long girl. Wow, so cute. <gasps> Ow! And the kitten thought that it was a toy and just put a tiny little kitten claws into my knee. This is, <laughs> no, this is my new plant. Go away. Um, okay. So <gasps> oh, Muppet. <laughs> Did that need to be so claw involved? All right, I'm gonna wrap, wrap those strings back up in that pot. This is Muppet. I'm so distracted, I can't. Okay. The needles themselves, I think, are going to be, they're sort of beefy enough, I guess, uh, that I think I'll be able to test how thirsty they are the same way that I would test my hearts. Love, Serapegia. <laughs> Love it. Serapegia linearis, string of needles. One last plant. Oh, I forgot what it was. <gasps> oh my god. So I have two little pickle things here that have fallen off the plant, so that's fine. I'll pop them there and try to propagate them. So what I have here is a Ripsalis, and I actually thought that I was buying a Ripsalis that I already own, but it doesn't look anything like it. <laughs> I really love Ripsalis and Epi, Epi, Epi something. There's other, that other jungle cactus that I can't remember the name of right now. I think they're so funky. They always have the funky shapes and growth patterns, but I don't know too much about them. I'm trying to learn their names and the differences between them, but I'm finding this genus really conf confusing and sort of slow to learn. This is a Ripsalis pilocarpa. Huge possibility that I'm pronouncing that wrong, but um, pilocampa, pilocarpa. <laughs> Pillow camper. What? <laughs> it's said that its common name is the hairy legs ripsalis, and I thought that it was the same as this little fella here that I have living at my desk, who I've just been absolutely loving at the moment. I just think that he is so cute and funky, and he's quite hairy as well. They kind of look like they might be spiky, especially being a jungle cactus but they're just nice, soft little, nice, soft little bristles. So I thought these were both that Ripsilas Pilocarpa, but obviously this is not the same plant, which is actually really exciting because now I have two different plants, not just two of the same plant, which I was already really excited for. So as well as being thicker, I like that this has some yellow and orange hues to it. I read that it can go orange or even red on the new growth, so that's really fun. Oh, this bristle is so soft, it's so cute. It's like you're trying to be a little, like, um, cowboy cactus down here. But really, it's just like a little, I don't know what this is. It feels like something I would exfoliate my body with. <laughs> also gives me SpongeBob vibes. Is that, is that anyone else? Just me, I don't know. That's cute as heck. Okay, so these are including over here. <laughs> the six, the six plants that I've purchased from Uprooted, and every single one of them is perfect. Honestly, the condition of the plant is, excuse me, the condition of the plant is perfect before shipping and after shipping by the looks of it. Nothing moved around, nothing was forgotten, nothing's banged up, nothing's broken, nothing's dead, nothing's dried out, nothing's overwatered. A dream shipment, really. I just cannot stop staring. Could you, like, no? Hello? Can I help you, miss? This is so striking. I can't wait until this is in my cabinet under my grow lights. Imagine how that's gonna glow. Should we look? This is an electric ass plant. If I could stop shaking, 
at any point in life. You get the idea. So thanks for watching. Please like my channel. <laughs> like my channel. Like, well, I mean, please like my channel, but please actually physically like this video and subscribe to my channel. Gotta practice that a little bit. Thanks again. <laughs> All right, guys, bye.